Welcome back everybody. I hope you're having a great weekend. Today we are going to take on the replacement of this fan and replace it with one of these fans. Same one is up here. And we're going to do that using these parts I printed the other day. I will put the link to these in Thingiverse from Thingiverse in the comment section below. I just think the guy who designed this did a really good job. There's more than one type of these adapters available on Thingiverse, but I really like this one because the guy made a velocity stack. That that's, just makes me giggle that he made what is probably a totally useless velocity stack just because it looks cool. That just, that trips my trigger, so we're going to use this one. And we got the fan. Got my soldering station over here, my soldering iron, the power supply. Got my cup of coffee. Oh, yeah, on a side note, here's an interesting tidbit. A couple of days ago, I got up and in my normal fog, and I made my cup of coffee, and I picked the cup up, and I drank it, and I realized the lid's on it. How did the lid get on it? I don't remember putting the lid on it. I came back, and I looked at the coffee maker, and there wasn't a drop anywhere, so I thought, well... I must have put the lid on it. Well, I did it again later on. And I realized my coffee maker, the one sitting over there, I can brew a cup of coffee into this cup with the lid on it. It hits, it hits the angled surface and goes right down into the drinking hole and it will not spill a drop. That just because I'm, I make messes all the time, so that was just amazing to me. Okay, so here we go. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the old fan off, and I brought in one of my wife's big studio lights, so I got a light over here to one to the left side, a light to the right side, the window is open, light's coming in, and I got my wife's studio light, so hopefully you're gonna be able to see this okay. And I may fast forward through some parts. I think I have all my ducks in a row, but then I remember that, you know, I never really have all my ducks in a row. So I may fast forward through some parts where I would go out to the garage to get another tool or make another cup of coffee or things like that. And, you know, I'm not going to have enough free wiring there, I think. Let's get rid of, let's get rid of these. I don't think I'm going to have enough free wiring there to um, work with. So I am going to have to pop the pet's fang off. And to do that, I'm probably going to have to take off some, some wire ties. But let's do that. It's the same size screw. And we'll pop those out. Let's yeah, should, see, should I pop? Well, I don't think I need to. Well, even if I do need to take the base off, I'm probably going to have to take the, the fang vent out in order to do that. Whoops. And you know what? Before I lose all the screws and everything, let's put all this together. So one thing I did uh, way I'll have it as a unit because I don't think that's going to make it any harder to assemble. So one thing I did was there's a little nub right on the end of here. I smoothed that down and I kind of put a bevel along the edges of that lip because otherwise it wasn't fitting down far enough on there for my screws to line up. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this thing together real quick because otherwise I'm going to scatter the screws and everything over. And oh, and another thing, you'll notice on his little, his little velocity stack, one ear is longer than the other. Don't be like me. Don't put it on the wrong way first and go, wait a minute, this guy's an idiot. That didn't fit. He's not an idiot. It does fit. So, I'm the idiot. But thankfully, only, I'm only a part-time idiot. Sometimes I actually do things right after the third or fourth attempt. So we're going to put all this together here. And I'll show you what it looks like assembled. I'm going to have to cut these wires too, but I'm not going to do that until... Come on, get on there. I'm a big guy. 
and I got great big hands and fingers and sometimes little bitty things are not really my forte. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna tighten these down. And, and you know, there's enough wiggle room in these screws, in, in the holes he gave you, to line this, this little intake up with the fan itself. So leave it loose at first and get it lined. Oh, you can't see that even with all this lighting, it's still dark. Leave it loose at first and then hold it in place. And when you tighten it, it should be good. There we go. Don't know if you can see it. You really can't see it there too well, but we're lined up beautifully. That's what the whole thing looked like. It's going to go right there like that. So let's go back to getting this pet's fang vent off it. And I may wind up having to redo all this wiring back here. I may, or at least redo the wires I did the other day when I put the when I put this fan in because I may want them if I can get them all in a single group in a single chunk heat shrink tube I'm gonna do that if I can so but we'll see oh and when you use heat shrink tube on around these printers again don't do what I did I'm so used to using a, a lighter or a small butane torch to do heat shrink tubing let me tell you something this little braided plastic cover that stuff is stupidly flammable and I mean stupidly flammable okay so here we go fortunately I only burned a couple inch, an inch or two of it so I just taped it up if I ever get it all off of there I'll put I've got some bigger heat shrink tube on it, but I'm not going to pull all the wires out to do it now. Next time, okay, we have enough distance now. I have no real desire to save this fan. These are just the cheapest little sleeve bearing fans that you can imagine, and they're available everywhere. So let's just get it off of there. And I'm going to reuse the wiring like I did for this one. And since that comes at a different angle, I don't think I'm really going to redo that. So I'm just going to cut these off here. We're going to pitch that. And I'm not sure I'm going to be able to use this on these wires. But we'll try it. Oh, and now maybe, let me turn this back real quick so that you can see the base for the pets fang this is what it looks like this is how it fits it's got a what would you call it a channel in the plastic that fits over this piece of me base metal and that keeps it from coming this way because there's only as two screws one here and one here but with that channel in the plastic boy it's a snug little fit whoever designed that did a good job okay coffee time Ow, that's hot. Okay, let's strip these. See if this will do it. This might just be a little too big. Ah, oh, no, it's gonna go in. There we go, perfect. Beautiful. Okay, now, this is gonna go there. So we're gonna need I'm probably going to put something there to hold that. We're going to need around. I don't want too much, but I want enough slack so that if I take it off and I need to do something, I don't have to desolder the wires or cut them to do it. So I like a little slack. I don't mind if I have to bind it up under a um, under a wire tie. So I'm going to kind of loop it like that and back. And that will give me enough that I can dangle it out of the way if I need to. So I'm going to cut to that, right? Is that what I wanted to do? That seems like an awful lot. We're going to go under this screw. Make sure we get this right the first time. Because I, while I don't mind one splice into it, in it, two would make me crazy. 
so yeah right there yeah that's a lot we'll see how it turns out if I have to redo it I'll redo it Arg. no fingernails got to keep remembering to hold things up in front of the camera otherwise you're not going to be able to see it and these fans have a red wire and a red and black wire and on the printer you have a black and a red I would assume that would be obvious but red goes in case it's not red goes to red and black and red goes to black and before we hook this thing up well after I before I solder it together and put it together I am going to and if I had been smart well yeah if I had been smart which I'm not always I would have noted which direction the fan you know what I did okay I am smart huh huh <laughs> stupid like a fox I did wire this red to red and black to black so I know which way the fan blows. It blows the correct way wired that way, so I don't really have to check. And if it's wrong, I'll admit that I'm an idiot. Okay, let's plug the soldering iron in. I'm gonna use my little TS-100 for this. Whoops. And I got a little soldering iron station. Let's loop the cord around back there so it won't be in my way any more than is necessary. And for those of you who watched my last video about these, these are really cool. And I got it upside down. And if I press that button, it will start to heat up. But for right now, eh, you know what, I'm about ready to heat it up, so let's go. Let's heat it up, and you'll see how fast it heats up. It's pretty amazing. This is a an, an 18 or 19 volt. What is it? 18 or 19? Whoops. Volt power supply from a Toshiba notebook. I've probably at one point in time had 25 or 30 dead notebooks here, and I've got all the power supplies from them still. So let me take a quick look. This is a man. That writing is little. Pretty sure this is 18 or 19 volts. 1.3 amp, 19 volts. 19 volts at 2.37 amps. Not two, not 2.4, but 2.37. Well, you see, it's up to it's up to 300 degrees C, just that fast. I'm gonna stick it over here in the little wire holder till we're ready for it. And now, let's not be stupid. Let's put the main chunk of heat shrink tubing on first, otherwise I'll have to desolder it. And I don't have any smaller heat shrink tubing right now, so, and I didn't when I did this one. So, and this won't shrink down small enough to do these individual wires. So what I'm gonna do is what I did here, wrap each strand in a little bit of electrical tape, then wrap the entire thing in electrical tape, just, just enough to keep them away from each other. Then I'm gonna go over the whole thing with a, with um, the larger heat shrink tube. So I like to um, I like to tin my wires first. I know that's not always a good thing to do, but in this case it'll be fine. So I'm just gonna twist them and we'll give them a tin. I guess some of the the connectors on these little main boards, those screw connectors. If you tin things first, and I apologize for that air conditioner. I hope that it's not making it impossible to hear me. It just turned off and I realize I'm talking super loud. If you tin them first and screw them down, solder flows even after it's hardened and cooled. It just flows very, it flows very slowly. So you tighten something down and over time as it heats and cools, the solder will flow. And then all of a sudden that will be loose and you'll have a bad connection. It'll overheat and you get a puff of smoke and your printer burns down. 
I guess it's not only the ANET A8s that burn down that way, but they do seem to be more prevalent doing it than others. And I could have swore I brought my my other stuff in from the garage. Where did I put it? I don't see it. All right, this is going to be probably one of those moments I fast forward through stuff because I can't find my flux or my solder. Okay, be right back. Okay, I'm back. Left it sitting on my workbench. Okay, so what I like to do is I am just going to poke these into the flux real quick. We want to get them separated a little better. And the same for these. And yes, I know this is all automotive or plumbing stuff because that's mostly what I do. But no matter what form it comes in, it's still the same stuff. Okay, gonna take my soldering iron going to dip its tip in the flux and let's tin the iron real quick should already be tinned good there it is and let's just tin these wires can't really see them boy they're tiny I was wearing glasses by the time I was 13 and probably needed them two or three years before that. Didn't find out I needed glasses until I started doing poorly in school and my parents, thinking I'm smarter than anybody else on the face of the planet, except them of course. <laughs> Rest in peace mom and dad. Couldn't figure out why. Well, I was taller than everybody else in school so the teacher put me in the back of the room where I wouldn't block anybody's view. Well, the problem with that was I couldn't see anything. And um, so I was doing poorly in school and I thought it was normal. I didn't think anybody could see anything back there. So I didn't say anything. Okay, why is this being difficult? Uh, sheet shrink tubing is on, so let's get a little more solder on there. Oops, and just threw the fan on the floor. 